I don't know about you, but recently, all I've been hearing about is Dave the Diver. Now on this channel, I like to focus on storytelling in movies, books, TV shows, but mostly through video games. Because if designed right, video games can tell stories in ways that other mediums can't. I wasn't expecting much in this area when it came to Dave the Diver. It seemed like just a chill game where you catch fish and run a sushi bar. I didn't expect there to be much depth to the story, and to be honest, I can't tell you much about the game's entire story. I'm still on chapter one that focuses on the mysterious sea people. But it wasn't that story that inspired me to make this video. In fact, instead it was a simple side story about dolphins. Before I dive into that, I need to explain some things about the game's design in general. The game has a pretty simple game loop. You play as Dave, a professional diver who with his associates Cobra and Bancho run a sushi bar at night. During the day, you dive to catch fish and grab other items that you can use as ingredients for the sushi bar, or you can find upgrades or even items for quests. The game has a really nice art style, and you can just tell how much effort the developers put into even the smallest action in a game. Check out what happens when you upgrade or learn a new recipe. And the dialogue sequences really remind me of Celeste. It doesn't take long for the game to draw you in. As you play the game more, you start to realize that the game actually has a lot of complex mechanics, but these aren't so overwhelming because they are introduced slowly over time, and they build off of previous mechanics you have learned. But now, here we get to the dolphin story. There is this recurring event that happens where this dolphin's mate keeps getting stuck in nets. The first time, it's an easy fix. The second time, the dolphin's mate is stuck in a net that belongs to a pirate ship, and the pirates are reeling the dolphin in. And as you try to free it, the pirates begin to shoot at you. And let me tell you, as strange as this may sound, I don't think I've actually been this stressed in a video game for a long time. Because I just didn't seem to be going quick enough to save the dolphin in time. And what would happen if the pirates captured the dolphin? Obviously they were going to kill the dolphin, or maybe not. Maybe they were going to sell it to SeaWorld or someplace like that. And these dolphins didn't exactly seem to be an integral part of the stories, so it's not like you'd lose anything. You wouldn't get to restart this sequence, or would you? And loading a previous save didn't occur to me, as I had all these thoughts and questions running through my mind. And what I really took away from this situation is that I felt like there were actual consequences to my actions. Particularly since other than my own personal investment into these creatures, which I felt attached to somehow because I already put effort in to save them once before, and the otherwise easiness of the game, the creatures didn't seem like the game would actually really care about what happened to them one way or another. But because I cared, the game was able to deliver an experience that was quite exhilarating, especially as I narrowly was able to avoid the dolphin just in time. Everything in this game is so neatly woven together including the story, that you just can't help but feel immersed. Had they not nailed down all these other elements, I don't think I would have cared so much about the dolphin story, but because I did feel immersed in the game, I cared about the sushi place because it was fun to play the dining sequence. It was like a Mario Party game, and I cared about the diving because it was fun catching fish. It was fun diving and exploring knowing that there are greater mysteries to be solved. I wanted to make money so I could buy better gear, and I wanted better gear so I could catch more types of fish. The cycle repeats and the story elements are added in the mix to make it even more fun and engaging. There's another encounter with the dolphins, but to be honest, it just didn't seem equivalent to the previous sequence. And there is probably going to be more, but to be honest, as the mechanics are beginning to stack up and even though learning these mechanics aren't difficult, it's just not delivering the kind of experience I was looking for. I was expecting something more akin to Stardew Valley, which is a chill game and acts kind of like a getaway from modern life. 
but Dave the Diver is about stepping into modern life. You have a social media presence. You have a regular media presence. You're hustling all the time without rest and has most of the upgrades and mechanics available through Dave's smartphone apps. And unlike Stardew Valley, which has a nice, slow, relaxing pace, Dave the Diver always seems to have something going on, which is absolutely great for some or probably even most gamers, but just not so much for me. Dave the Diver is very well made, and it is greater than the sum of its parts. If you're here just for the story, it seems to be an intriguing one. If it's just the gameplay, it's great on its own. But either way, at least for a while, this game will keep you hooked. Alright, so editing Alex here. Apparently there's even farming and stuff in Dave the Diver, which I haven't even got to yet. So the game scales beyond even where I'm at right now. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing at all. I think part of the problem is my own expectations going into the game. Now that I've had a bit of time to separate myself from the game, I, I do feel more drawn to play this game. And with that in mind, take everything with a grain of salt. Let's continue. Thanks for watching. If you've played this game or would like to, please let me know in the comments. Well, that's it for now. I'll see you guys next time.